morning. Back on the record on case number 19 CR 586 A and B. Cases styled State of Ohio versus Daniel Groves and State of Ohio versus Jessica Groves. Counsel and the parties are back in the courtroom as are the jurors and alternate jurors. We were in the state's uh, presentation of evidence. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. We are, Your Honor. Thank you. The state may call their next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the state of Ohio would call Steve Gamble. forward and if you'll raise your right hand for me please sir do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God Amen. please have a seat now sir we do have media in the courtroom here today do you have any objection to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony no objection mr. Teeman you may inquire sir would you state your name for the record uh, Stephen Ray Gamble how do you spell your last name for the court reporter G-A-M B-I-L-L. -L. And where do you live? I live in Otway. Uh, how are you employed? I'm a uh, union electrician. And do you serve your community as a volunteer fireman as well? Yes, sir. Uh, what fire department do you serve with? Otway FD. And what are your duties there? Um, basically, I'm a... Uh, uh, we, of course, fight fires, uh, extrication on uh, car wrecks, um, just anything really to help out the community. Any kind of uh, issues in the community that the fire department can assist with? Yes. You guys uh, stop what you're doing and, and come run it. Yeah, we fight a lot of forest fires, you know, uh, okay. structure fires. Um, sir, I'd like to direct your attention to June 12th of 2019. Do you recall that date? Yes, sir. Um, with regard to your duties as a fireman, what happened that day? <clears throat> I, uh, I got home about 4.30 from work, and uh, the call had already come in. Um, the call came in as, uh, that we needed to call dispatch uh, to get details for the run. Usually when it's out, it's usually something different, not a typical run that we go on. Could By the time I had... The, sorry to interrupt. Could you explain to the jury, um, as a volunteer fireman, how you're called to duty, so to speak? Uh, we all have pagers, uh, radios that um, dispatch county can set off to let us all know that we need to have a, 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 fire, a fire run. Uh, when that goes off... We all report in that we've acknowledged the page and report to the fire department. Okay. And uh, you indicated this one wasn't the typical call. No. Uh, typically, they tell us, uh, Otway FD, you have a run. Uh, we have a code four car wreck, or uh, we have a structure fire, and they give the address right over the radio. This was, hey, we need you to call county to get details for the information. So when I, when I got home, uh, the page had already come in. My wife met me at the door with my radio, said you need to go to the FD. My brother, who is assistant chief, was already there. He had already called county and told us that, uh, that we was requested to try and pump out a well for the sheriff's department. Okay, um, so what did you do then? Uh, it's not something that we typically do, um, so we tried to gather as many tools, materials that we had on hand to try and do this task. Um, we had an, a rough idea of why we were doing it. We had heard rumors. Uh, we did not know. Um, we did not know where the well was, uh, how we could get access to it. We have very large trucks that could pump things out. but. So we tried to gather as much tools and material that we could find to accomplish this task. And then we tried to report to the location on the address given. Do you have a rough count on how many of the fire department personnel were able to, to come for this run? Uh, originally, the first call out, there was three of us. 
and um, once we figured out that we could not get our large engine back to the scene, we uh, then broke off um, to two of the guys, my brother, Rick, and Dan, went to try to access a pump with a long hose, um, some equipment to try and fish in the well, and when they returned, they brought another firefighter with them, Mike, uh, to try and help out as well. Okay, let's back up a moment. Um, so where were you directed to go to assist uh, the Sheriff's Department? We were given a address. It was uh, on Mount Hope Road. Um, the address was real close to a church camp is the only reason we could even uh, pull something up on our phones to try and find where to go. When we received, when we showed up there, um, of course there was no one that we could see. So we waited and uh, we could see some tire tracks in a field. Um, Dan and Rick at that time were in a smaller truck. I was in a large fire engine and uh, pumper truck. They went back to see if they could find someone after we'd been there for roughly 10 minutes and they had took a smaller truck and went back down the road to try and find someone. At that time, I got out of the engine and I started walking through the field and that's when I noticed a uh, black SUV coming out of the field and that's when I uh, introduced myself to the deputies. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? Okay. Let the record reflect the opinion of the council. Let's remark states is at 25. Sir, I'm hanging what has been marked as State's Exhibit 25. Um, do you recognize what's depicted in State's Exhibit 25? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what is State's Exhibit 25? It is a uh, picture, a topographical picture of uh, Mount Hope Road, um, the location of the uh, church camp and the well that is in a field adjacent to it. Okay. Is that a Google Maps uh, version of it? Yes, sir. It's pretty much the same one we used to try and figure out where we were going. Okay. okay. Now, is it a fair statement that you can't say when Google took this picture? No, sir. But does it accurately depict Mount Hope Road and, and the area? Yes, sir. Is that a yes? Yes. You can answer out loud, please. Sorry. Sir, can you see that map all right from here? Yes. Uh, the judge may have a pointer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, sir, is this uh, up depicted on the overhead? Is that uh, what I just previously had you identify as State's Exhibit 25? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, if you could, could you on this map point out, uh, well, first of all, what's the general area we see here on this map? Say again? What's the general area that this map depicts? Uh, it's Mount Hope. Um, the Boy Scout camp or the church camp is to on the is roughly here. Um, that's where we had parked the engine in the trucks originally. Uh, to that was the address that we were given. Um, that was the first place we showed up trying to figure out where we needed to be. And is this all inside of County Ohio that you see on this map? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So you're you're parked. Uh, Roughly where along Mount Hope Road? Say again. Where are you parked roughly along Mount Hope Road in this picture? Uh, roughly we're right, parked right there at that intersection. Okay. Right in front of the uh, uh, church camp. Okay. And you uh, were able to um, get to the location of a well? Yeah, we had to um, uh, cut a small 
had to cut a tree out of the way. Um, the brush truck that we had there had chainsaws, so we cleaned it out so we could get access back a field road or logging road back to the field. All right. Um, so we see in this picture we have a map and we have uh, looks like a, a, a pin at the top there. Uh, what's the pin at the top of the uh, map we see on the overhead? Uh, rough, that's roughly the location of the well where we um, were requested to pump the water out of. Okay, so is that, where is the well located? Uh, the well was about, oh shoot, five to six hundred yards back through this field. Um, you had to go through a field next to the road and then there was a wood line where it was extremely muddy. Uh, you went through a couple hundred yards of wood line and then back into a large, it opened up into a large field again that you could not see from the roadway. Okay. Uh, what was the weather like that day? Uh, rainy. Uh, it was drizzling rain when we arrived. Uh, it was a little cool for, you know, for June. Um, and then the rain just continually picked up as the day went along. Do you recall the weather for the week or the weeks before? <clears throat> from do you recall what the weather was like that that June? Uh, pretty typical June weather. I mean, it was, yeah, you know, most days sunny, I guess. Ohio. Yeah, one day one thing, one day another. Or every five minutes one thing. Yeah. Something else another five minutes. All right. So, <clears throat> so you get to this field. Uh, who's with you when you get to the field? Um, when we get to the field, it is uh, myself, my brother, Rick Gamble, and Dan Shirey. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else there besides uh, volunteer firemen? Uh, yes. There were uh, three detectives. Okay. Um, did you see the well when you got to the field? Uh, no. You could not see the well until they walked us over and pointed directly at it. Could you describe it to the jury? What did the well look like? Uh, the well was uh, ground level. It was completely surrounded by grass. Uh, the grass at the time was probably two to two and a half, three feet tall. Um, you could have just walked right into the well. You, would, you couldn't see it. Um, the detectives took us over, pointed at the well, and um, asked us to do to try and pump the water out. Um, there's no way you could have possibly seen it. Okay. Sir, could you uh, peruse those exhibits for me? Sir, what are these exhibits? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put them up on the board. The record, Your Honor, I'm placing on the overhead what's been marked States Exhibit 26. Sir, do you recognize this uh, States Exhibit 26? Yes, sir. What is States Exhibit 26? That is the um, second field that we entered uh, past the tree line and the location of the well. Is that appear to be a true and accurate rendition of, uh, of that field on June 12, 2019? Yes, sir. For the record, this will be States Exhibit 27. Sir, what does State's Exhibit 27 do? Um, that's the same field, and um, that is close to the well location. Uh, <coughs> and we see, uh, we see anything in the background of this uh, picture? Uh, yes, that's the um, SUV of the detectives that I first encountered when walking into the field. 
Is this a true and accurate depiction of the scene on June 12, 2019? Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 28. Sir, what is, is depicted in State's Exhibit 28? <clears throat> that is the well that we were requested to pump out. Is that a true and accurate depiction of the well on June 12, 2019? Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 29. Sir, what does this depict? And that is the well that we um, were requested to pump out. Okay. Uh, you indicated, I believe, in your testimony that it was full of water. Yes. Okay. Um, approximately, uh, let's set a little foundation here. Um, Sir, we'll get into the details a little bit later, but at some point in your, in you and the other firemen's recovery, did you uh, get a rough estimate of the depth of the well? Yeah, we were told when we showed up on location that the well was roughly 30 feet deep, and um, it was, that was real accurate, come to find out. Okay. All right, so you arrived at the scene. Um, what, what was the first action uh, you, you all took at that point? Uh, we accessed the well, um, tried to move back some of the vegetation, um, and tried to see what the depth was, what we thought we could do to uh, remove the water from the well, and um, see what the ground was like around the well so that if we didn't want to make it collapse or fall in uh, was just to access the 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 scene at the time okay and what was one of the first obstacles that you all had to try to deal with uh, the biggest obstacle was actually accessing the field itself um, with the trucks um, we our trucks will pump water but uh, they won't pump water from that depth, and the truck that we have that would even be capable of doing such a thing, we couldn't even get back in that field. Okay. Um, so uh, was there a plan or a discussion of what to do at that point? Yeah, me and uh, my brother, uh, Rick and Dan, uh, then decided that we needed to find uh, generators, a portable pump. Um, we had some rope back at the station. We had a uh, large uh, that we had used before for extrication. It's a large metal hook um, that w was heavy enough that we felt like if we hung it down there that we could fill something with it uh, as we slowly moved it around. Um, then at that point, um, everybody went to gather these materials. Okay. Uh, were you able to acquire some materials to try to pump up the pump out the well? Uh, yes, sir. Um, Dan um, actually had to go to, I believe it was his father's house, and asked to borrow a portable pump, a trash pump, water pump. It had a uh, Honda, it had a motor on it, so that we could portably get it back air and he had a several feet of hose to try and pump out the well. Um, we uh, got ropes, hooks, um, and also brought in another truck that would be able to access the field. Okay. All right, may I approach? Nice. For the record, flight is in opposing counsel, states exhibits 30 and 31. Sir, I'm handing you one of the marked states exhibits 30 and 31. Could you take a look at these items, please? <clears throat> Thank you. Sir, I'm going to place states exhibit 31 on the overhead projector. Sir, what is depicted in states exhibit 31? Uh, that is. Uh, uh, Rick and uh, Mike 
I apologize. State's Exhibit 30. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's Rick and Mike uh, attempting to um, get the hard suction hose down in the well uh, so we can prime it to begin pumping out the well. Okay. Um, who is holding the, um, the hose? That's Mike. My, uh, the assistant chief in the white hard hat is Rick. That's my brother. Okay. States Exhibit 31. What does this depict? Um, that's the hose in the well uh, that we were pumping out with the trash pump. And do these two pictures accurately depict the scene uh, on June 12, 2019? Yes, sir. Now, were you successful uh, pumping the water out of the well? Um, we removed between, I'd say, 12 to 15 feet of water. It's probably closer, right around 13 feet of water from the well. Um, and then the pump would not create enough suction to lift that much head pressure to pump the water out at that point. Okay. Um, was it continuing to rain at that point as well? Oh, extremely, yes. All right. Uh, I assume there, is it safe to assume there was more water coming back into the well? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Were you able to observe that? From yes. The scene? Okay. So, uh, were any further efforts to pump, up, pump out the well made? Uh, well, yeah, we tried for uh, quite a while, I'd say over a couple hours, to pump the well. And then we had even talked about going and getting a smaller pump, like a um, sump pump, small garden hose style pump. We figured maybe it would have less head pressure and a generator to run it off of so that we could maybe pump the water down farther. And but we uh, did not at that time. Okay. So after your efforts to pump the well, um, what was the next plan? Um, Mike had mentioned he had some um, heavy fishing gear and had some hooks that he thought maybe we could get down in there that we could fill around the well and at least try and tell if there was something there. And um, uh, that's the time when we had hooked up the extrication hook and I had laid on the ground and was trying to fish around the well and see if I could feel something. All right, and um, how long did, did you ultimately um, determine that there was something in the well? Um, when we was trying to pump the water out, I had had the hook in the well and was moving it around and I couldn't tell if I was hitting the hard suction hose that we used or if I was hitting something else, I could feel something with the hook, but I had, at that time, had, had no luck in actually uh, hooking it at that time. Uh, after they quit um, uh, pumping the water out, and the, was the, the pump hose removed at that point? Yes, sir. Uh, once we figured we could not pull any more water out of the well, um, Mike had went to see if he could find some heavy fishing equipment something and at that time we pulled the hoses out and give me a little better access to move the rope um, the way the well was shaped at the top it's you know very small hole uh, a few feet in diameter and then the well would actually as it went down it got bigger so when they moved the hose it let me lay down and reach my arm farther down in the well and move the hook around and that's when I was like I've pretty sure that I felt something in the well and at that time I felt it move once and then I touched it again moved the rope where I thought it would be around what was in the well and I yanked on it and I felt it hook in at that time it was very heavy um, from the time that the pump hose was removed to when you were able to hook the object um, how long did that take? Uh, actually, it went um, quicker than probably within 20 minutes. Okay. You indicated that whatever you had hooked was heavy. Yes, sir. Um, how, why do you say that? Um, 
you know, we're pulling on roughly a half inch diameter rope. And when I hooked it, I lifted and I could tell I had a hold of something that was moving, but uh, it was, you know, very hard to move. Okay. Um, what did you do then? Um, once I realized I had something, um, Dan and my brother Rick were standing there. I looked at my brother, I went, I've got something. Grabbed the rope and I lifted on the rope and handed him a section of it and he stood above me and then Dan also came in to help and we started lifting the rope out of the well. Were you able to successfully uh, lift the object you'd hooked out of the well? Yes, sir. How long did it take to extricate that object from the well? Uh, once we hooked it, we had it out of the well within minutes. Okay. Just very quickly. Uh, when we got the object to the top of the well, it would not come out of the top of the hole. Uh, we hooked it about halfway down. And when it came out, it was coming at an angle. So when we got it to the top, it, we couldn't lift it out with the rope. And that's when I laid on the ground, grabbed the crates, repositioned them, and then lifted them out and rolled it onto the ground. Could you describe what you saw um, pulled out of the well? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, two milk crates. Uh, the milk crates were tied together, um, open end to open end. Uh, they were tied with um, copper wire, I believe, uh, tie wire, it looked like they used. Um, uh, it could even been a few um, tie wraps or zip ties on it. Uh, then there was a chain wrapped around it with padlocks. And uh, it, you could see the rocks inside it. Okay. Um, did you notice anything else at that point? Um, you noticed there was a, a package inside of it. Yes. Anything else that you could sense or, or see? Or? No, sir. Or any smells associated with the package? Um, when it comes to the top of the well, uh, and we removed it from the well at that moment. No, there was not. What did you do with it once you got it out of the well? Uh, once it was removed from the well, um, you know, uh, we felt like we had accomplished a task at first. We just we'd been given a job to do, and it, you kind of once we got it to the top of the well, we felt like we had done what we was asked, and it's almost kind of a moment of relief that we had found it. And then everyone just kind of realized what it was, and we all walked away from it. Were there any changes in the item once it started draining water? Uh, yes, sir. Um, within a few minutes uh, of us all walking away, that was about the time Mike, we had called him off of, don't go get your fishing gear. Uh, come on back and bring the truck. We need the truck to remove this item from the field. It was probably roughly 10 minutes. Uh, he hadn't gotten that far. He came back. He backed the truck into the field over next to the well. And me, myself and Dan Shirey were headed around the truck to load it. And that's when you smelled it. And it was uh, very strong. What kind of smell was it? Rot, death. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Let's record like the hand closing counsel of the Martin State exhibits uh, 32, 33, 34, and 35. So I'm going to ask you again to look at uh, State's Exhibits 32 through 35. Okay. I'm going to 
one place on the other page, sir, was the Martin State Exhibit 32. Sir, what does this depict? That's um, Dan Shirey in the white T-shirt, and that is myself um, reaching into the well to try and remove the crates. Okay. Um, this photograph, do we see part of the crate there in the photograph? That is where it had just started to come up and was at an angle and was hitting the top of the, the well. And uh, the previous photographs, uh, that picture here with the, with the well without anybody around it. Is this the same same well? Yes, sir. Okay. States Exhibit 33. <clears throat> what does this depict? That is us at the still trying to remove the crates from the well. Um, Dan and my brother were trying to hold it. We did not want to it to, we didn't want the weight or anything to readjust and move and lose what we had uh, brought to the top of the well. States Exhibit 34. Sir, what the, is this depict? Uh, that's the crates that we were, that we had hooked. That is <clears throat> myself removing the hook from the crates after I had reached in and readjusted it and got a firm grip of it to pull it out of the well. So where we see this hook, this, this yellow thing extended from your hand, mm -hmm. is that a metal hook? Yes, sir. And is that where it was able to hook? Um, Just by luck. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 30, 35. Sir, what is this? <clears throat> that is the crate once it was removed from the well and we removed the hook and equipment from around it. Sir, you previously described um, the crates um, to all this time. And can you, does this give you a, uh, uh, an accurate depiction of what you remember? Yes, sir. All right, what are we seeing in this uh, closer up view of uh, states of uh, um, It's the, um, the, the white and black, or the zip ties um, that they use to tie the crates together and also to tie the chain to the crates so that the chain would not come off of the crates as it was being moved and the rocks and weights that are inside of it. Uh, these, these pictures I've showed you states exhibits uh, 33 through uh, 35, do they accurately depict the scene at that well on June 12, 2019? Yes, they do. Uh, sir, in your capacity and as uh, an electrician, as a volunteer fireman, are you often required to move heavy objects around? Yes, sir. Um, from your experience and understanding, did you have an estimate of the weight of that uh, that object? Um, yeah, I would say it's anywhere between 60 to 80 pounds. Okay. And uh, sir, when you pull an object up through water, um, uh, does that add to the level of force needed to pull that out? Yes, sir. So you get it out, did you do anything to change or alter those crates at that point? No, sir. Okay. What happened at that point? <clears throat> Once it was removed and um, we had 
been asked by the deputies to try and help them transport it out of the field. Um, we backed our brush truck over close to the um, crates and uh, that's when we walked around the back of the uh, truck to load it, uh, Dan and myself, and um, the smell hit us. Uh, Dan at that time turned around and couldn't do it and returned to the front of the truck. I went back there by myself, picked it up, loaded it into the back of the truck and took a, uh, uh, a ratchet strap and hooked it around it so that we would not lose it or it would not be damaged and tied it down and removed it from and then removed it from the field. Yeah. Drove it back on the, through the, with the brush truck? Yes, sir. All right, you removed it from the field. What happened to it at that point? Um, when we removed it from the field, uh, I drove the brush truck out of the field with the crates in the back, and the deputies asked us if we could remain on scene and um, help uh, transport it into the coroner's uh, vehicle. Okay. And uh, was that was that done? Excuse Did me. Did the coroner arrive on the scene? Uh, yeah, it took roughly. Um, it seemed like a, probably a lot longer sitting there than what it was. But I'd say it was a, a roughly an hour, uh, maybe a little more, a little less. And uh, we sat out there uh, while it was raining, uh, waiting on the uh, corner to arrive. I had at that time talked to Dan and Mike and Rick, and they took all of the uh, other firefighting equipment and everything back to the shop, uh, back to the FD, and at that time, uh, tried to get everything back in order for the next run. All right. Do you have anything else to do with this extraction at that point? Um, no. Once the coroner um, arrived, I helped him uh, load it into the back of his van, and then that was that was it. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Tiedemann. Mr. Stratton, you may cross-examine. Your Honor, no questions. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Ms. Scott, you may cross-examine. Briefly, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Campbell. When you encountered the deputies coming out of the scene originally, um, you, when you got to the scene, you stated that you walked into the field after you did not meet any law enforcement yes, or, or yes, other emergency personnel on the roadway. Yes, ma'am. At the address that you thought you were being called to, correct? Yes. <laughs> When the vehicle that you encountered that you believe had some type of law enforcement personnel in it as you were walking down that fieldway, did you see who all was in the vehicle? Uh, no, not at first. Okay. Um, I um, was in you know, street clothes at the time. My turnout gear was in the truck. I was just walking through the field, so I uh, grabbed my radio, um, yelled at my brother and Dan that I had... I believe I had found someone that they should come back, and at that point, the deputies pulled up and uh, identified themselves. Okay. So were you at their vehicle speaking to them? Yes, ma'am. And did you see who all was inside the vehicle? I seen the, um, the two deputies sitting up front. And okay. Was there a passenger in the back seat? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you see the gentleman sitting over there in the gray shirt? It was Daniel. Daniel Groves? Yes, ma'am. Um, so you know who he is? We, we went to school together. Okay. Was he the person that was sitting in the back seat of that law enforcement vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, any redirect, Mr. Team? No, sir. Thank so, you. It says witness excused. Yes, he is, Your Honor. Witness is excused, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. You're free to go. Thank you. State may call their next witness. <clears throat> Sir, State of Ohio will call uh, Dan Shirey, Your Honor. Dan Shirey. Dan Shirey. Dan Shirey. Dan Shirey. Raise your 
right hand for me, please. Sir, do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Sir, please have a seat. Sir, we do have media in the courtroom today. Do you have any objection to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony? No. Team, you may inquire. Sir, would you state your name for the record? My name is Dan Shirey. How do you spell your last name for the court reporter? It's S-H-I-R-E-Y. Where do you live? Um, right around Otway, Tick Ridge, Otway. All right, it's my understanding you're a volunteer fireman? Yes, sir. Uh, who do you serve with? Otway. And uh, what, what is your role at the Otway Fire Department? Just, uh, just a firefighter. How long have you been with the Otway Fire Department? Uh, about eight years. Uh, what are your, your uh, you mentioned you're just a firefighter. I, I think you're being somewhat well, self-deprecating. I mean, what, what do you do there at the fire department? Uh, you know, of course, you know, we, we go on fire calls, uh, auto accidents, um, of course, you know, rescue, recovery. Um, you know, sometimes we get called to help with the uh, squad, lift assist, um, a little bit of everything. All right. Um, were you called on uh, for a situation on June 12th of 2019? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about your recollection of that situation. Uh, <clears throat> when the, our pagers went off and the call came in from the county, you know, it, it was odd because rather than to list what the the nature of the call was, they said to have someone call call county, call the dispatch. Of course, you know, we kind of knew what had been going on, and we, I think most of us had an idea what it was about. Um, so that we got to the you know the fire station, and then one of us, I don't remember which one, called into county, and you know they said to meet. What we was you know looking to do, and we would meet with the uh, Sutter County Sheriff's Department at the scene. All right. Um, what was your understanding of what they were wanting, wanting you to do? Uh, you know, to try to recover a, a, a body in the bottom of the well. Okay. Um, and where were you directed to go? Uh, the, it was an address on Mount Hope Road. I don't recall the exact address, but it was uh, directly across the road from uh, the Mount Hope Bible School there. And uh, when we got there, there wasn't really no one else there. We didn't really see anything. What'd you do then? Uh, I believe me and <clears throat> one of the other, maybe Rick, went back the other way looking for, you know, the, the, actually, I think we went to the home uh, to see if we could find the sheriff, anyone from the sheriff's department, which there was a, a deputy there. What home was that? Pardon? What home was that you went uh, to? The, the Groves residence. All right. Daniel and Jessica Groves? Yes. Are you familiar with Daniel and Jessica Groves? I just know of them. Don't really know them personally. Okay. Um, what was the weather like that day? It was raining, rainy, pretty, pretty heavy rain. So at that point, you're at the Groves residence. You see a deputy. Uh, what happens then? Um, you know, he, he told us that the, uh, I, I believe Captain Murphy and, and uh, a couple of the, the, uh, the other folks that we needed to meet with was down out the road or, or in a field looking for this well. Um, so we just headed back to the, the, the initial spot where we, we had stopped to begin with across from Mount Hope Bible School. Were you able to meet up with the... Uh... Uh, Steve Gamble at that point? Yeah, yes. Steve was in one of the, the bigger engine, uh, just staying at that scene to see if you know anybody ever come to kind of guide us where to go. Are you familiar with the terrain out there in the, on the Mount Hope Road? Uh, somewhat. Now, what was yeah. it? What was the terrain like? Uh, uh, it's you know hilly, um, curvy, hilly. You know, typical for kind of out in that area. And uh, were you provided additional information as to where to go at that point? Yeah, eventually the, the folks from the Sheriff's Department come through the, through the field and, and told us where we needed to go. And we kind of followed them back, back through the field and uh, 
to the to the scene of the well. Okay. Uh, was this all even terrain at that point when you're going back to this no, field? No, <clears throat> it was you know kind of hilly and rutted out. The road was you know it wasn't a really a improved road. It was just an old path through a field basically in in back into another field. Um, pretty probably a quarter mile off the, the road, off of Mount Hope Road. And uh, yeah, I, I think it may even went through a, a creek bed. And uh, it was pretty rough terrain. We couldn't get a, you know, a big truck back there. So we, we had our full wheel drive brush truck that, uh, that we drove back along with the, the folks from the Sheriff's Department. All right. Uh, who was in the brush truck? Uh, at that point it was, uh, I believe it was me, Steve Gamble and Rick Gamble. Okay. Um, uh, at some point, you arrived at uh, what was uh, known as the well. At that point, yes, sir. And um, uh, what what did the well look like when you first got there? Um, it was really hard to see. It was kind of in the middle of the field, um, <clears throat> and you know the vegetation that was kind of growed up and. Um, you know, if you didn't know it was there, you, you know, it could be kind of dangerous. You could drove right in it uh, or fell and walked in it. Um, it wasn't real big. I would say probably three foot, three and a half foot in diameter. And uh, like I said, you know, it's vegetation had grown up around it and over it, so you, you really couldn't see much. Uh, did you notice if it was full? Yes, it was. Full of water? Full of water. Okay. Um, Mr. Gamble's already testified a little bit about uh, the efforts that were made um, to get a pump. Uh, what was your role in um, getting the materials and equipment together to get to the scene? Uh, well, as far as, you know, once we got there and kind of sized up the scene, you know, or, you know, the thought was, well, we can't get one of our trucks back here to try to pump it. And probably even if we did, it wouldn't pump it because the, the depth or the, you know, the the deputy said that the uh, the well was somewhere around 30 foot. They thought, or that's what they'd been told. And uh, but anyway, we, from your experience with the well, did that appear to be fairly accurate? Well, yeah. Once you know, once we got the other equipment and dropped uh, the the hook down and, and measured the rope that we had dropped into the well, it, it seemed to be pretty accurate, about 30 feet. Okay. But I'd went and left the scene to go get a pump, and uh, then come back. And uh, we, we, you know, I brought a pump and we tried to pump it and it only pumped down to about 10 feet. And then the pump wouldn't pump any, any more after that point. It was, you know, too much head pressure to be able to pull the water up that high. Okay. And um, the whole time, what's the weather like? It, it's raining pretty, pretty steady the whole time. Okay. Um, so uh, what happened at that point? Uh, at that point, we'd also brought, you know, some, some different gears, some ropes and some hooks and different things just in case, you know, to try to use as a retrieval. Um, and Steve Gamble, he, he had been, um, even as we was trying to pump, and the pump would lose prime, so it was, you know, and we'd have to go back and reprime it. And, you know, we fought with the, the pump for quite a while, I don't know, probably an hour at least once we got the pump there. Um, but Steve had started lowering the rope down with the hook, and I, the first rope we had, I think, was only about 20 feet long, so we had, he had to tie a, a piece of webbing, um, kind of like a, a lanyard or a strap, you know, onto the end of it to make it long enough to hit the bottom. And, you know, as he was trying to uh, fill the bottom, if you will, or, or see if he could hook something, you know, he could tell by the feel of the rope that there was something down there. And, uh, you know, he, he just kept, you know, trying to hook into something to see if, you know, if, if he was able to hook it. And, um, you know, after, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe another 45 minutes to an hour, uh, eventually, you know, he, he was able to hook, uh, of course, what ended up being the, the milk crate. Let me ask you about the timeline on that. Um, Y'all are standing in the rain. Um, at one point you have the pump trying to suck the water out and another point you're fishing around. Right. Um, is it safe to say when exactly things happened in this timeline? Maybe a little 
inaccurate in your recollection? As far as, I'm sorry. As far as when, when you started fishing it out, how long it took to fish it out, when you started pumping? Yeah, I, I would have, you know, from the time we, we got to the scene, um, like I said, I, you know, we went back there, sized it up. Uh, I left to go get a pump, come back. You know, that was probably close to an hour from the time that we initially arrived till I got the pump back on the scene. Um, probably tried to pump the well for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, you know, like I said, we, we, we was able to pump it down about 10 feet approximately. And then at that point, the pump wouldn't pump water anymore, so we kind of give up on, on the pumping uh, at that point. So, you know, there's probably close to two hours uh, from the time we arrived at the scene. And then, you know, I'm guessing another 45 minutes to an hour until the time that we, we was able, or Steve was able to hook the milk crate and, you know, retrieve the... Did you assist him lifting the item out of the well? Yes. Um, was it heavy? Very, very heavy. Um, it was about all you know, two or three of us could do to, you know, at the end of a rope, you know, weight like that's kind of tough. I would estimate the, you know, the crate and everything probably weighed 75, 80 pounds would be my guess. All right, I'm going to put up on the screen here, sir, what's been marked as state's exhibit 33. Do you recognize what this photograph depicts? Yeah. Yeah, it's us at the, at the well and the, the crate's just starting to come out. That's uh, you on the right and uh, is that uh, Steve on the left there? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, is that Rick standing in the back gallery? I believe so. This takes exhibit 34. Is this the item that uh, you guys pulled out of the well? Yes, it is. Well, those two pictures accurately depict your recollection of the scene that day on June 12th? Yes. Once uh, you got the, the item out of the well, um, what, what happened next? What did you do next? Well, you know, once once we, we got it out and set it down, then I think everybody kind of comes to the realization that you know what was what was in there and that you know this was loss of the human life and uh, and we just kind of all we walked away and tried to you know regain our composure. This isn't something you normally deal with as a fireman? Not, uh, you know, we, we've been on calls where we've had to help recover uh, deceased people, you know, help transport them out, but nothing, nothing like this. So um, did you assist in uh, re removing that from the scene? Uh, we... You know, it, it sat there for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, Mike McCoy, who had left to, to go try to get some other gear to help retrieve, had come back in the, uh, the four-wheel drive, we call it the brush truck. And um, so, the, you know, when he come back with the, that, then the, the, the folks from the Sheriff's Department asked if we could transport uh, the, the crate and the body to uh, down to the end of the into the field by the road to where we could, you know, the corner could meet, meet us there. So uh, I believe it was Steve Gamble and myself went to to lift it up into the back of the truck, but I, I couldn't. I, uh, the, the smell overwhelmed me, and um, so I wasn't able to help actually lift it into the truck. Okay. Um, did you have any other role in this extraction after that point? Uh, not really. Once you know, once we look, got it, they got it in the back of the truck and, and secured it to the back of the truck. Um, we just you know cleaned up the scene, got all of our equipment, loaded it back in the truck, um, went back out of the field, which at this time with all the rain and everything, the 
I didn't know if we was going to make it back out of the field because it was rutted out and real muddy. And, um, but we were able to get back out to the end of the road. And at that point, um, Steve stayed in the brush truck with the, the body and uh, the rest of us left in the other engine that we'd had and left out on by the road and went back to the station to put our gear away and all of our equipment away. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, you may cross examine the witness. Just a second. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, Ms. Scott, you may cross examine the witness. Just briefly, Your Honor. Both you and your colleague, um, good morning, by the way. Good morning. Um, both you and your colleague talked about the difficulty of accessing that area in the back and some different things um, that needed to be done uh, so your vehicles could access that. You also talked about um, the road not being an actual road and it was washed out and different things like that. Do you recall that testimony? Mm hmm Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We all have a tendency of doing it. Um, so what would access be like to that area on four wheelers or something to that effect? Would they still have the same struggle of getting back there on a four wheeler? It would be a little easier trucks? than in a vehicle. Okay. Um, easier than in a vehicle, Even but there car. would still be some difficulties ascertaining um, that area. For a four wheeler, probably not so much because uh, as I explained, it was rutted out. You know, the vehicle leaves a rut and the four wheeler could probably ride in the middle between the ruts that the vehicle left. Okay, so it could be accessible by a four-wheeler. Much easier than in a- Much easier than the vehicle, vehicle that you were and certainly a fire to truck. Okay. Okay, thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Correct. No, Your Honor. Is this witness excused? Yes, thank you, sir. Ms. Scott? Yes, excused, yes, thank you. Mr. Stratton. Sir, you're free to go. State may call their next witness. The bench. Gentlemen, our next witness is going to be a long witness. It's not a witness I'm going to want to take a break in the middle of, so we're going to go ahead and take a short recess at this point. Remember my earlier admonition to you, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It's your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it's finally submitted to you. If you'll let Mr. Hutchins know when you're ready to return to the courtroom, uh, the lawyers and I will be ready as soon as you're ready. Court is recessed.